Bonjour, mesdames et messieurs. In this episode, I show you how to shoot and retouch the Milky Way. Bonjour, mesdames et messieurs. My name is Serge Ramelli. I'm a French photographer living in the beautiful city of Paris, France. And I make two tutorials per week. Click here to subscribe to my YouTube channel and click here if you want to get over hundreds of world files from all over the world. All right, in last episode, I showed you how to do a double exposure. You first take this photo and then this photo and we mix both with layers and that's the final result. It's a cool effect that a lot of cameras can do in camera, but I'm going to show it to you how you can do it in Photoshop because I didn't have any cameras that could do it in camera. This week, I'm going to take you to Greece and we, I'm going to give you some tips and tricks on shooting and retouching the Milky Way. Uh, a friend of mine named Guillaume sent me nine wall files that I'm going to give you for free that he shot on an island in Greece at quarter to midnight. This is the final result and I will show the whole workflow. He shot this with a Nikon D7000 with an entry lens, not a very expensive lens, and the result is pretty cool. So let me take you to the galaxy and show you how we retouch the Milky Way. Bonjour, mesdames et messieurs, and welcome to a tutorial I've been wanting to do for a long time, which is how to shoot the Milky Way. Now, this photo was not taken by me, but by a friend of mine called... Now, watch this. His real name is Guillaume Tello de Parton de Vaughan. Uh, he's, a, he's a very nice guy, so let's call him Guillaume. And uh, in fact, he's a student of mine. He's been following my podcast for a year. And uh, per what he says, he learned everything from my uh, channel, so I'm very honored. And he is offering to you guys all his raw files from that shot in Greece. This was shot at quarter to midnight in the Ile, uh, in the Partmos Island with a Nikon D7000. Now, the Nikon D7000 is not a very high-end camera. And what he did is, of course, he was on a tripod. Now, if you, what he did, what he did is he, he wanted to make a pano. So he started, he took in all nine photos. But instead of following like a specific rule of, you know, of just making uh, portraits, uh, photos or just making landscape photos. He kind of shot it everywhere, just trying to make sure he didn't miss anything. And thanks to the beauty of photo merge, you will see Photoshop will be able to recover everything. But first we have to do a little bit in, um, in Lightroom. But let's talk about how he shot this. This was shot at 20 seconds. So quarter to midnight in Greece, the Milky Way was visible for what he says, uh, but not as visible as what, uh, you know, a good DSLR can see. So 20 second at f2.8. Now, f2.8 might seem to you a very small uh, depth of field, but from the viewpoint of Earth, all the stars are on the same plane. So if your depth of field is not so big, it doesn't matter. 2.8 is totally fine for shooting the stars in the Milky Way. Uh, now, on, the problem is on the ISO, he went to 6400, which is the max that the D7000 can go, uh, I believe, naturally. I'm not an icon expert. So the photos got lots of noise, but the Milky Way is really visible. And I want to show you how we can try to get the best out of it. So he shot nine photos at 17 millimeter, guys, uh, with a 17 to 50 millimeter lens, which is not a very high end lens. So it's an entry DSLR with an entry lens. So not an expensive gear. Interesting. And you will see the result is quite decent. Uh, and actually, Guillaume is giving you uh, his, um, his raw file so you can see for yourself and reproduce what I'm about to show you. I just want to show you his website. His website is ag-photography.org. He's saying that he learned everything from me. And I'm really proud because I love his photography. Check out his work in New York, Singapore, all over France aj-photography.org. There will be a link of his website under this video. The guy is amazing. Really, uh, I mean, if he's only been shooting for a year, he's a very fast learner. I'm very proud. Okay, so let's get started with Lightroom. So first, you know the rule. We have raw files. The whole idea of raw files is let's get the best out of what we can from these raw files. So I'm going to do my usual workflow. Open up the shadows and bring down the highlights. Okay, now one thing that's very key about uh, Milk Way, Milky Way, maybe, so the highlights maybe I'm not going to do to minus 100. I'm going to do something like this and I'm going to press the Alt key, move the white toward the right until I can see a lot of the biggest star and then move the blacks to the left until we see the, the background. So we have a lot of contrast. I might add some clarity. And one thing that's very important uh, 
when shooting, uh, you know, you have a lot of light pollution usually when you shoot the Milky Way. So I'm gonna put the temperature, like let's go for example on daylight and let's move to the right like to 3,400 or something or 500, the white balance. I want it to be very blue, I think it's nicer. And let's just add, that's just because it's me, a little bit of magenta, like plus 23. Why? Because I want to get the green out of. And the best way to get all the green out is to add a bit of magenta. Maybe let's go even further, 32 or something. Okay, so now we've got a very noisy foreground, like super noisy. Everything is super noisy. Uh, so one way to make it less noisy is to reduce the shadows a little bit. And uh, But you will see the noise, we will deal in two passes. So pass number one, uh, let's go to... Um, Let's go to uh, the lens correction, on about the profile correction and remove chromatic aberration. That's one thing we can do. And let's, let's zoom in here, okay? And let's go to the noise reduction. So noise reduction, the, the thing is, if you go too strong with no, the noise reduction, you're gonna take out a lot of small stars and we don't want that. So let's see what happens when we move the noise, the luminance slider uh, to about, uh, uh, if you move it to about 30, I noticed that at 30, I was, I was lacking of some of the small star. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to do it in two paths. I'm going to go to 15 first, uh, or like maybe 19. And then I'm going to go to the color noise. There's a lot of color noise here. And I'm going to go color noise. I'm going to go like to about 60. Okay. Uh, then sharpening. Now sharpening, I'm not going to do much because it doesn't bring anything to the table except, uh, you know, except just bringing more noise. So... We've already reduced some of the noise, and honestly, the noise you really see, but check it out. Before the noise reduction, after the noise reduction. So we already, already did a bit on that, which is cool. And um, let me zoom out uh, by just seeing the whole photo. And uh, so let's see already the before and after. So backslash key for the before. That's the before and that's the after. So, you know, we haven't done much yet. You know, we just made the whole thing blue and took out some of the noise. So now I'm happy with what I did on the first photo. I'm gonna command A for, uh, you know, having everything sync, uh, selected, click on sync, making sure everything, uh, check all, everything is uh, getting synchronized and synchronized. So now we're gonna synchronize everything on these photos. Now I have no idea how uh, Guillaume actually shot this because it was, he himself said he got a bit confused. You know, he didn't know exactly what to do. So he sort of shot everywhere. But check out the magic of photo merge. If I right click and I do edit um, and I go to merge to panorama in Photoshop, Photoshop is gonna figure it out for its, himself. It's gonna just try to merge everything into one big photo. Now it's gonna, I'm gonna put on pause because it's gonna take a bit of time uh, we are talking, you know, nine raw files, probably each file is about 20 million pixels. So I don't know what's happening. Where is my Photoshop? What is, oh, here it is. Uh, I'm gonna click on okay. Plus I'm on my laptop because I'm traveling, uh, but I got a fast light up, uh, but it's gonna take a few minutes. So now let's wait for Photoshop to do its magic. Let me put this on pause and see what it's doing. Okay, while it is, uh, what it is doing the panel, I just wanna show you two little tricks about shooting the Milky Way. One is what we call light pollution. If you go on Google and you tap light pollution map uh, for your country, you should get like big PDF files that's gonna show you, you know, where is uh, located places, cities, I mean, not cities obviously, but like countryside where you don't have, you know, when it's black, there is not the much city light. Now, less you have city lights, better you see the Milky Way. So. Uh, try to go, I mean, it's a bit scary, you know, you have to go in the countryside completely outside where there is like nothing, okay? And the second thing is the, the, the moon phases. I went to moonconnections.com. You can see the different moon phases. You know, the moon is becoming, this is what we call the new moon. It's becoming bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger in, until the full moon and then smaller and smaller and smaller. Now, I always thought that you could see the Milky Way when you had a full moon or like a half moon because it would, it would you know, uh, brighten the, the stars, but that's a complete different concept. Actually, the moon is bringing a lot of light pollution. So the best is the new moon. For example, here, if you're in the North Hemisphere, uh, Thursday, uh, 1st of, Ju uh, oh, sorry, let's go to, let's go to July, because we are just about in July now. So like, you know, here on the 1st of July, 2nd of July, the, the moon is very small, then it gets big, but again, from the 24, 25, 27, uh, 26 is a good time to go in a countryside because lesser is the moon visible 
um, better you will see the stars. Of course, uh, there should be no clouds. That's very important. So we are back in Photoshop and uh, it looks very strange, doesn't it? Uh, the first thing that I do, uh, the thing is, every photo merge is gonna look a bit weird at first. So first thing you need to do is press Command E to merge everything into one layer. Now, because this is nine uh, DNG file, we're gonna have a big, very big photo. Check it out, in fact, if I go to image, image size, it's 18,000 pixels large and 9,000 pixels high. So that's a lot of data. I'm gonna press Command G to double uh, my layers and then I'm gonna to go to Filter, Adaptive Wide Angle. And now you need a pretty fast computer to do that if you're doing it with the nine raw files because what it's gonna do is detect that this was shot with the D7000, uh, the lens model, and, uh, and it is gonna to try to do its best to, uh, to, so that the, the panel looks the best. Now, you see here it's like curved and here it's curved. I'll show you a little trick which is really cool. If you click once uh, and you hold down your mouse, you have a, oops, I'm sorry. Okay, I'm redoing this. It's lagging a bit because this is a huge file. So, all right, I'm gonna erase what I did here. So, what you do is you click and then you lift up, okay? Now that's gonna make a little line here. Now I want this to be straight, so all I have to do is press shift, it's becoming pink, and let go. And this whole part will uh, become straight. Now this is lagging because again, it's an 18,000 uh, pixel file. When I trained on it first before doing it, uh, I did it with a 5,000 file, 5,000 pixel file it was a lot faster. But I wanted to show you the high res version of it. So now I can click here also, for example, or here, hold, hold my uh, mouse and just press a shift key. Shift key is mean I want this to be straight and hold like to be exactly perfectly vertical. Okay, now I'm happy with that. And now I got a, it looks kind of okay. So let's click on okay. And, uh, and I'm gonna make this, uh, you know, it's gonna apply the adaptive wide angle and it's gonna make this panel more straight. Let me put on pause because it might take a couple of minutes to do it. All right, so we are back from uh, the wide angle filter. I'm gonna take the crop tool and well, let's first turn off the visibility of the background layer and let's crop the photo with just what we need. Uh, I think I'm gonna keep some of that stuff here. Yeah, something like that is good. It's a good crop. I would say it's a good crop. Now I'm missing a little bit here of texture, so I'm just gonna take uh, the, my clone stem tool, press Alt here, and just copy some of the matter here. Cause you know, this is dark, you can hardly see anything. And I'm gonna do same thing here for the missing stars. I could do this with a content aware at fill, but uh, honestly, I didn't care and it was gonna take forever with such a big file. So, okay, now that's the basic. So all we used is we use Photoshop to merge the photo. But not only, we're gonna see if we can do a little bit better about the noise. So I'm gonna take both of these layers and press Command E to merge everything into one layer. I'm gonna reduplicate the layer with Command J. And let's press Z for zoom, let's go to 100%. You see there is a lot of noise. And one of the best noise plugin out there is the filter, uh, Topaz Labs, Topaz Denoise 5. Now, Topaz Denoise 5 is a very, very powerful uh, denoiser. And uh, that's why I did a little bit in Lightroom and I'm gonna do a bit more uh, in uh, this plugin. Now it's a big file, so it might take a few seconds to open. Here we are. Okay, and I'm not gonna do much. Basically here you can see I'm gonna reset all. And that's the basic look. Now it looks kind of weird because this is a Retina display and I've seen that there is some, I don't think they updated their plugin for Retina display. But anyways, I can still, figure out what's going on. I'm just gonna to go to noise reduction and put it about halfway here on the noise reduction. So it's gonna blur everything and then I'm gonna go back to detail recovery, recover some details here about halfway and uh, reduce some blur about halfway here or about halfway of that halfway. Okay, and this is original, very noisy and this is what it looks like. And um, you know what, I might even go further on the strengths of the overall of, yeah, of that. 
and even the recovery detail. I might just go a bit stronger, something like this. Okay, but the thing is, I did this on its own layer. So I can always lower the opacity of that layer until I have something that fits. While this is processing, I just want to show you that if you go to my website, photosearch.com, and you go to news, Topaz, and you use this link uh, to buy your Topaz uh, detail, denoiser, or the whole package, if you use the code PHOTOSEARCH, you'll get 15% off, and you will help to support this free podcast. Okay, back to Topaz, see where it's standing, and um, here we are, that's the Topaz denoiser. I'm gonna put on post until it's done. Okay, so you can see the before, that's the before. I don't know if you can tell on video, but there's a lot of noise between the stars and that's the after. It's actually uh, a lot better. Let's zoom out. And uh, I mean, on, if you zoom out so much on the before or after here, you won't even see a difference. It's really, you know, this all, taking out this noise is really if I ever wanted to print this in big. Okay, now I'm gonna go to File, Close, Save. Okay, so I'm back in Lightroom and I'm ready to do the final retouching on this one. All I'm gonna do is take a brush, and on this brush, I'm gonna add a bit of, let me go to uh, temp, for example. I'm gonna just add some yellow, add some magenta, because I'm an magenta addict, magenta addict, and a bit of clarity, and making sure that my uh, feather is 100 flow and density. Um, hmm, let's put them around like 60, yeah, around 60, okay? And I'm just gonna paint here on the Milky Way. I'm just trying to add a bit of warmth on the Milky Way, because this is often how it is here, so that it stands out even more. And maybe just uh, add a new brush with the same settings and paint even more just here at the beginning, just so that we have a little bit more contrast with the, with the Milky Way, because this is really how it is. Okay, done with that. And now I'm just, I might uh, recrop the photo a little bit. I think I wanna have less land, something like this, more sky, and add a little bit of uh, post-crop vignetting just to make it more intense and make the space more interesting here. And voila, so let me show you full screen. This is the Milky Way from Guillaume, uh, for taken in Greece. I think the result is pretty cool for uh, Nikon D7000 and really uh, it got me inspired to get out there. You know, you just have to be into a countryside where, you know, I repeat, there is no moon, you know, have a very wide aperture lens, you know, go 2.8, uh, you know, just focus on some of the biggest stars. And, you know, if you have a very high hand DSLR, like the Sony A7R, the D800, it's better because you will get less noise and even better crispy uh, stars. But look, you know, entry DSLR, entry lens, and the result is pretty acceptable. I encourage you to download the DNG files and see for yourself. Now, I also want to talk to you about a new course that I have coming up on my store from a very good friend artist named Ricard. He came up with a new course on fantasy compositing. I get a lot of requests on that, and he does an amazing job on this. So I asked him to make a full course for you guys, and here is a little presentation. Check it out. If you like this type of compositing, you will learn a lot of very cool techniques and it's going to get your Photoshop skill to a whole new level. So here is Ricard. Hello, my name is Ricard. I want to introduce you to a new course called Fantasy Photo Compositing. In this course, we're going to take this image that I took of my daughter. We're going to add a new background, add some wings, and then add some grunge and titles. And you're going to end up with a photo that looks like this. The techniques that I cover in this course are essential to any compositing project that you want to do. I'm sure you'll learn quite a few new techniques in this, as well as some basic compositing techniques that are relevant to any project that you want to do. I hope you have fun, and here it is. Okay guys, I hope you like this. If you have any suggestions of tutorials you think I should be doing, just leave a comment on the YouTube channel, and I will read them and do my best to serve you. I will see you in the next episode. Mesdames et messieurs, au revoir.